guys and welcome to this week's lesson. Uh, this week we're going to be introducing vectors and scalars and in particular um, we're going to be introducing new concept of displacement and for the first time we're going to be differentiating between what we mean by the term speed and what we mean to, by the term velocity. So I guess really the, probably the best thing to do is if we just jump straight into it. Okay so scales and vectors. So what we're going to learn about is what the difference between a vector and a scalar quantity is um, and know which one is which. Um, you're going to hopefully be able to uh, do some calculations using some vector quantities, um, either in one dimension or in uh, two dimensions at right angles. Um, and one we're not going to get to look at, I think, just now is the scale diagram, a uh, scale drawing version of doing vectors. Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, the important one is the doing the calculation side of it. So let's just jump straight in. Okay, what's the difference between a scale and a vector? Now, um, these two statements on the, the screen just now, you should be learning verbatim. Um, they are virtually always asked at some point during an exam. So what is a scalar? A scalar is a measurement that has a magnitude only. Um, and a vector is a measurement that has both a magnitude and a direction. So everything you've come across so far has been scalars. Uh, speed is a scalar, um, temperature is a scalar, distance is a scalar. These are all examples of scalars, because if I ask you what the distance is, you might say six meters, um, but you're not giving me a direction necessarily because you could be walking around in a circle. Um, uh, vectors are very much different to that. So. Let's have a look at some examples. So on the left hand side, we've already mentioned scalars. So temperature, energy, kinetic energy, speed, distance, volume, all scalars. On the right hand side, we've got the vectors. So velocity is the vector equivalent of speed. Displacement is the vector equivalent of distance. We give them different names um, so that it's clear whether we're discussing a vector or a scalar. Now, noticing that velocity is on the, the vector side and speed is on the scalar side. So from this point on, they are different physical quantities to you guys. I know in the past they were probably used interchangeably, but they are both very different now. Um, displacement's got a completely different name, um, which we don't normally use before this point. So displacement is the vector equivalent of distance. Weight and force, um, if you're standing on the edge of a cliff and I'm going to apply a, you know, a 20 newton force to you, you're going to be very interested in which direction that force is in. Uh, so that appears in there. Um, weight, again, is a, a force, is an example of a force, and weight obviously has a direction which is downwards. So that must be a vector. The one that's not actually on the board um, is acceleration. Uh, so acceleration really should appear under vectors, although technically it can be either, because you can calculate uh, an acceleration using only scalars. So an acceleration is a, a change in speed divided by the time taken, in which case it's a scalar or it can be the change in velocity divided by the time taken, in which case it's a vector. But um, for the sake of keeping it nice and simple, if you're ever asked, and there's a good chance you might be, um, acceleration is a vector. Okay, so let's just get ourselves thinking. So imagine you're going from your maths class to your physics class. So um, <laughs> how far you go, I guess, depends on the time of year and uh, whether we're in a global pandemic with a one-way system or not. Um, but you leave your maths classroom and presumably you're going to go up one set of stairs and round the top floor and directly to your physics classroom. And you therefore will have a certain distance you have walked, which you could measure quite easily just by, well, you tough, tough using a trundle wheel going up the stairs, but you probably get the idea. But what is your displacement? Your displacement is slightly different because your displacement is a straight line from where you were sat in your maths classroom to where you're sat in your physics classroom. And that's going to go not up the stairs and along the corridors, it's going to go in a straight line through the building. So they're not the same thing. So another example, if we were to look at the distance between uh, Fors and Elgin, and I used Fors Academy and Elgin Academy just for convenience, well, that's around about 12 miles or so by road, but as we can see from the screen, the road follows this kind of wiggly path, so it's going all the way through here, all the way around through the oak wood, and following this kind of not a straight line route. So that's how far you would go um, by car, 
but your displacement is slightly different. Your displacement is this red line, this vector, which is a straight line from your origin here at Forza Academy to your final point at Elgin Academy. And it doesn't take a meandering route, it goes in a straight line. And we can therefore talk about the length of that vector. Um, my quick measurements online, which uh, I accept may not be perfectly precise, uh, say it's about 17 kilometers or so. Um, and because it's a vector, it requires a direction. And I'm going to give you a bearing of 0, 1, 6. And we'll worry about bearings on the next slide. OK. OK, so just to be clear, distance is a scalar and it just includes the distance traveled. So in our race car, which starts down here and it travels along the racetrack, round the corner and back. And that gives it a total distance of 240 meters. Displacement is just a measure of where you end up compared to where you where you started with no information about the route you took to get there. So in this case, my displacement is this vector from the start to the finish, which is from here, and it's a length of 40 meters, and it's in the north direction. On the diagram here, we're told that this is north. So this length of this vector is 40 meters, and it's in the north direction, so there's my displacement. Now, vector directions may be as simple as just north, east, south, or west. Um, but in the real world, they may be more complex in terms of they may be somewhere between these ex extremes. And in fact, let's be honest, they're more, most likely to be somewhere between these extremes. So what we normally do is we use three figure bearings. So what we do is we've got north, east, south and west on our compass here. And we say north is just zero. So three zeros. And well, how many degrees are there in a circle? Well, there's 360. So if we go around clockwise, We've just got all the angles going all the way around. We don't get to 360, of course, because it goes back to zero. Um, so we've got to like 359 degrees here, and then we're back to zero. So in terms of our direction, the best way to define our direction is to give um, the angle from north. And we write that as a three-figure bearing, as we did in our Elgin Academy example. So let's have a look. A girl runs 40 metres east, then 30 metres north. How far has she run? That's your first question. How far away is she from the start and in what direction? Well, one way you could do it, and I, I do encourage you to give this a go, is to have a go at doing a scale diagram. So draw this to scale. Um, you do have to be very, very careful. And it is OK to do this in exams. Um, you could draw this very, very carefully and choose a scale. So, well, 40 metres, you could maybe say, I don't know, uh, one centimetre equals 10 metres, or if you've got a really big bit of paper, one centimetre equals one metre. Um, so one centimetre equals 10 metres is probably better. So you draw a line four centimetres this direction. And then don't eyeball it. Use a protractor or a right-angled square and then do three centimetres in this direction. And then you can measure with a ruler the length of your resultant vector, and you can use a protractor to measure the angle. Now you have to be really careful because if you do decide to do this in an exam, uh, the tolerances on what you're allowed for your final answer are very tight. You may only be allowed, for example, one or two degrees on the angle. So you have to be very accurate doing this. I would encourage you, however, um, to do it by calculation. So maybe I should uh, give you a shot of the calculation then. Okay, so I've copied the diagram across here and I'm going to run through it. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is find out the length of the resultant vector. Now, the SQA will be kind to us. At National 5, our two vectors that we have to add together must always be at right angles. So uh, in this case, she's gone east and then she's gone north. That's fine. Uh, so they're at right angles. And to do this, to draw our diagram, we've got to draw the vectors nose to tail. Now, they're already nose to tail in this version. But in an exam question, 
you may be given something like, oh, I don't know. Um, there she goes, she's got 40 meters east and she's got 30 meters north. Now, these are not nose to tail. Remember the nose is the arrow bit and the tail is the tail. So these are both tail to tail. So to correctly draw it, I need to do it like the, the actual diagram. Let me just rub that out. So I draw my, um, in fact, let me do it slightly different to the diagram actually, because this will be a little bit interested because I'm using the same one as in the PowerPoint. So I do my 30 meters north vector. And I do my 40 meters east vector. Now, these are actually, I've put them a different way around. So my my diagram does not look like the one in the picture. And you know what? That's okay. So let me just go with it and I'll show you that I get the same answer as the uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so I'm going to join my resultant vector and I'm going to call my resultant vector S because S for displacement. Okay, so how do I get S? Well, if you've got a right angle triangle, as we do, the first place I'd be looking at is Pythagoras. Um, so what we can say is S squared equals 30 squared plus 40 squared. And I'm not gonna reach for my calculator because they have been really kind in the question and they've given us a three, four, five triangle. So if you don't recall from maths, three, four, five. And we can scale it up, we can multiply the sides by 10. So I know straight away that my displacement is 50 meters. Excellent. Now, have I calculated the displacement? No, absolutely I have not. If this was an exam, this would be um, one of four marks probably. Um, and the SQA like to leave a little bit of a trap for you. They'll ask you to calculate the displacement and they will not remind you that displacement is a vector. They expect you to realize that because it's a vector, it needs a direction. So I'm, I would encourage you whenever you're doing this in an exam is to always draw a vector diagram like I have. And add on to your vector diagram, and I'm gonna do this. Oops, my pen works. I'm gonna label this angle theta, okay? And that's going to help me calculate my direction. And because I've labeled it in the diagram, the examiner now knows which angle I am calculating and that can save you marks if you uh, make some silly mistakes later on down the line. Okay, so what I need to do is now is calculate that angle and we will refer to our uh, maths soccer tour. Now, I've actually got all three sides of the triangle. I can use whichever of those I like. It is my habit to use the sides that are given in the question. So I've calculated S, but 30 and 40 were given to me. So I'm going to use tan for opposite over adjacent. So tan theta, I will write this out, opposite over adjacent. Okay, so therefore theta equals tan to the minus one. Now in my diagram, and this will be probably slightly different to the PowerPoint slide, it's 40 over 30. Okay. Okay, so theta therefore, I will quickly do this on my calculator because believe it or not, I can't do this in my head. I know you're shocked, aren't you? And that equals 53 degrees. Okay, so what I would do as good practice, although I've done enough to get the full four marks, you really want your examiner to love you. So I would say my displacement is equal to 50 meters at a bearing of 053 degrees. 
and that is my final answer. And the examiner can see that straight away and immediately they're going to fall in love with you and start thinking about giving you all the four marks before they've looked at anything else. Okay, back to the PowerPoint then. So yeah, I've got the same answer. My bearing is at uh, 50 meters at 053 degrees, excellent. Um, if I had used the way of adding the vectors shown here though, I would have calculated this angle here, which is alpha. But remember that that would be north and to get a bearing, it's this angle here I want angle, I'll just call it X. Okay, if I want it to be a bearing and x would be equal to 90 minus alpha. So don't forget that, you've got to give the correct angle. If you muck up your angle, you're also going to lose marks. What about distance though? How far has she gone? Well, the distance covered is 70 meters. So her displacement is 50, but to get the distance, I just add the 30 and 40 together because that's how far she's actually traveled. But it's equal to, a displacement of 50 meters because the displacement is just how far she is at the end compared to her start position. Okay well speed and velocity well we've already said speed is a scalar um, and only has a magnitude. Velocity a vector and it has to have a magnitude and direction. Well you'd be glad to know we've already done the heavy lifting we've done the hard part. Um, so we define um, velocity and speed the same way or in a very similar way. So speed, and I'll get you to look at the top part of the fraction, is distance divided by time. Velocity is displacement divided by time. So we've just calculated the displacement for our girl on our run. Um, we've also got the distance, so we could do both of these calculations. Now we've got the same calculation as before, but now we've got a time included. It takes her 50 seconds. So I'm not gonna do um, scale drawings. We're gonna use the calculations. Average speed equals distance divided by time. Well, we know she covered 70 meters because remember, distance equals 30 plus 40. That's 70 meters. Okay. Um, now to do the calculation, hopefully you're all well ahead of me at this point. So you do your 70 meters divided by 50 seconds and that gives us 1.4 meters per second. Okay, well we can do the average velocity is this time it's displacement divided by time. Well, the displacement was only 50 meters. So 50 meters divided by 50 meters is one meter per second. And the good news is I don't have to do another direction calculation because the direction is the same. So we calculated 0, 053 for the displacement. So the same direction is, it's the same direction for the velocity. Okay, and the last thing, we're not gonna worry about too much just now, but force vectors are also something we'll need to have a look at. And we do exactly the same thing for force vectors. Um, as we do for the other vectors, but we'll say we'll come back to that later. Um, some very quick, uh, simple examples in the picture. We can use one dimensional diagrams. And if we're doing one dimensional, we can say that that is positive because it's to the right and that is negative. To, so it's to the left. So I can say that my force, my total force is 300 newtons because we've got 300 newtons to the right. Plus, and the, the force to the left is minus, so that's minus 300. So that equals a total force of zero newtons. So that's the total unbalanced force. And we know that this would be a bit like watching a, a really good tug of war on the sports day. I don't know which two houses we want to pit against each other. Maybe uh, Ed and Killian Darnaway, maybe having a really good session at it and they're both evenly matched and therefore they're just kind of sitting there, both applying forces and the rope's not moving either side. Um, this time on the bottom, and I suppose the science department is typically associated with Ed and Killy, so we'll put them there. And who should we pick on this time? Oh, we'll leave it at Darnaway. Uh, I'm sure Mrs. Stevenson will forgive me. Um, so this time it's three, the force is equal to 300 
plus minus 400 so it is therefore equal to minus 100 newtons and it's not to say that you have a negative force it just means that the total force is in the negative direction which means in Kelly are going to win the tug of war this year okay guys hope that made sense um, as always any problems get in touch and uh, I'll speak to you soon